thank you for joining the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis YouTube uh, channel. And we uh, thank you for choosing to spend this time with us uh, during our Sunday morning worship. And I pray also that you will receive something that will bless you on your Christian journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, let your words come alive in and through us for the purpose of hearing and doing according to your will. We thank you for the abundance that you have poured into our life, that you have invested into us. And we pray that you would teach us through your word today how to be investors in the lives of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now today I want to talk about doing something with what you have. It's important that we learn to do something with what we have or else we end up doing nothing. Uh, our text is found in Matthew's uh, chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. And I'm going to read all of those uh, 16 verses, I think it is. Uh, verse 14 says, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To, uh, to each according to his abilities. Then he went away, and he who had received the five talents went at once and traded it with uh, them, and he made five more talents. So also he who had uh, the two talents made two more talents. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came uh, forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents, and here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And to the second one, uh, likewise, uh, who had uh, two talents, he came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents, and here I have made two talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, just uh, as a side note, not the points for this message, but, uh, uh, and, and I'm going to spend most of the time on the one with the w one talent, so I'll just point this, this something that jumped out at me for the one that had five and two talents. First of all, they received the praise of God. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. And whatever we do, it should not be to gain the praise, but it should uh, uh, be something that God freely gives to us, uh, and that's his praise. There's nothing like a father's praise or a parent's praise or a teacher's praise or a supervisor or boss's praise. And we ought to want God to praise the work of our hands. And secondly, he promoted them. He said, I will set you over much. Uh, and, and then he, he permeated them uh, or he penetrated. Uh, they, they were able to penetrate God's uh, joy. Uh, they brought joy from God. And God says, enter into the joy of your master. We ought to want to uh, give God joy because he gives us so much joy, even in the midst of sorrow. Now, now we'll, we'll go to the uh, uh, one talent guy. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow gathering where you scattered no seeds. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talents in the ground, and here you have what is yours. 
But his master answered him, you wicked and slowful servant. You knew that I reap where I, had, where I have not sown and gathered where I scattered no seeds. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what uh, was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given and he, uh, even he will have an abundance, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast into uh, out of darkness. And this is where the, the uh, worthless, a wicked servant was cast into outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, eternal uh, uh, suffering. Now, a little bit about a talent. A talent is what is traded with and what God has given us. And uh, that's the lesson that we're trying to look at and how to increase uh, what God has given us by reinvesting. God invests in us, so we ought to reinvest uh, what he has given us. Now, whatever God commits to us, whether it's a gift or grace or mercy or wisdom or forgiveness or whatever it is, has within itself a tendency to grow. All we have to do is invest in a wise way. For instance, the secret to worldly success is to go out at once and to make the best use of whatever we have. But we as the believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, as, uh, as God's servants, we ought to set the standards that the world live by and not the reverse. God often puts a good thought into the, our mind. And we should not fail to see the value in that thought, but to make the best of it. Christ will come again. And love, even love can be enlarged and, and intellect and memory can be uh, increased. We should consecrate the time so that the time that we, God has given us will become larger. Uh, he had he he was he, he, uh, he was given what he could handle each of the 10 each of the three servants was given what he could handle too often we look at what we have and compare it to what others have been given and we we think that instead of using what we have been given we become envious and we think hard of God, even, even God, who has given us. And a lot of times, we might not say it with our lips, but our action speaks volumes. And our action sometimes, when, when we bury the gifts that God has given us, is saying that we are displeased with God when it should be the other way around. We can't develop an attitude of becoming envious of what others have been given, uh, uh, even though they have been given more than us, because God gives us according to our ability and God foreknows what we can handle. God gives each of us what we can handle and the one that was given one talent was evidently given more than he could handle. And sometimes I believe God gives us more than he knows we can handle. He knows what we're going to do with it, but yet he invests in each of us. It appeared that God gave him enough to test his faithfulness so that he would be clear concerning others. He couldn't rightly accuse God of being unfair as he tried to do. God had already given him what he had. And God didn't have to give him anything. 
There are times when God gives us more than we deserve. Well, all the time, God gives us more than we deserve. And at times, the one that invests wisely will re re receive what was given to the unwise investors. There are times when we might observe God giving a lot to those, and we would consider it an enormous waste to give it to them. But God knows before how he should dispense what is his. When it comes down to the whole truth, none of us are worthy of anything from the hand of God. Everything is grace. It's unearned and undeserved. And that takes away our right to brag about ourselves in any way uh, or for any reason. God also uh, uh, wants us to realize that he who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you had not scattered seeds. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talents in the ground where you have what you have, what, what was yours now? But his master answered him and said, you wicked and slowful servant. Right there, three words in that one sentence are very important. You wicked and slowful servant. He says, you knew. So that's, that means he knew something about God but he, 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 he accused God of being unjust to him, unfair to him. He said, since you knew uh, that I had, uh, uh, was reaping where I had not sown and gathered where I had gathered uh, nothing, had, had, had uh, scattered no seeds, then you ought to have invested my money with the banker. You ought to did something. And at the time when I would come, I would receive what was my own with interest. And then, uh, so take the talent from him and give to him who has the 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and uh, to the one that has an abundance, but from the one who has not, even that will be taken away and he will be cast in, uh, into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, the first thing about this wicked and slowful servant, he accused God wrongfully. He went on to, to say that he had all, so he, he, the one that had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you had scattered no seeds. When you get angry at someone for giving you something, now I know there are some things, if somebody was to come up and, and, and with no mask on in this season, and, and, and you ended up with uh, getting uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 from them, you would be angry and rightly so. But when someone gives you something good, something that you can use to further your life and to, to, to become a, a productive citizen in your community, in your church community, in your family community, wouldn't you be glad? This one talent person was overlooking the fact that he didn't have to give him anything. God does not have to give us anything. Psalms 24 and 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. In other words, everything, everybody belong to the Lord. Can you imagine the sun, the moon, the planets? Everything belonged to the Lord. All of us that have, have been and have died, everybody that's alive now, everybody that will be born and live, all belong to God. 
And, and, and that brings up a subject that's not part of a manuscript that, that we ought to invest in a way in this day and age that we're living in that it will be a blessing or bless, uh, enrich somebody the next generation's life. We should always be investing in the next generation. Enough of that. Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all people, for the earth is mine. That's the Lord talking. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14 says, Behold, to the Lord your God belongs heaven and the heavens of heaven, the earth and all that is in it. Job 41 and 11 says, who has first given to me that I should repay him? Whatever is under the whole earth or under the whole heaven is mine, said the Lord. And then Psalms chapter 50, the 50th number of Psalms, verse 12 says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the whole world, and its fullness is mine. So, so God can do whatever he chooses with whatever is his. He, he can do with whatever products, whatever talents, whatever uh, gold and silver, whatever is his, he can do what he wants to. And he can do whatever he wants to with us, his servants. Uh, second thing is he had the wrong view of himself. Now he had the wrong view of God. Now he has the wrong view of himself. Uh, he, he really thought that he could discuss this matter with God. And God, he, he says, uh, but his master answered him uh, after he went on and told God, I know you uh, was a mean man and and you reap where you didn't uh, sow, and you gathered where you didn't uh, scatter any seeds. But God said to him, you, you, you've been talking about me. Now let's talk about you. You wicked and slowful servant. You knew that I reaped where I did not uh, sow and gathered where, the, where I had not scattered uh, any seeds. This individual failed to live up to God's expectations of him. It's one thing to not live up to our own expectations or to our parents' expectations, but to not live up to God's expectations of us. Now, that's, uh, 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 that's, that's, that's not cool. I'll just put it that way. That's not prosper, prosperous. He had a false sense of himself. He didn't realize the truth about himself. Number one was he was a servant. And a servant, one of the definitions of a servant is he who worked for the benefit of his master. He was to work for the benefit of his master. He was his master's servant. And then he was wicked, meaning that uh, he was evil in principle and practice. In other words, he deviated from divine law. He didn't do what God expected of him. He sought not to please God. And so he was addicted to sin or disobeying God. He was addicted to it. And we do well to check out our own lives because we could very well be addicted to disobeying God and not even realize it. And then the third thing, he was slowful, meaning that he was lazy. He was addicted to being lazy. From time to time, we should, through God's word, through the lens of God's eyes, see ourselves as God sees us and ask God to show me, me, the real me, the me that I can't see, the me that's shrouded in my eyes, 
show me me. His punishment was severe for everyone who has more will be given and who and he will have an abundance but from the one who has nothing even what he has will be taken away or he who has little what he has will be taken away and then he will be cast this 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 worthless servant will be cast into outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth it's always cost more to do wrong than it does to do right. A typical example, it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. The important thing uh, that we learn, and this is a biblical example of someone that uh, invested wrong or took pride in what God had given him, uh, King Hezekiah, for instance, what do we do when we've invested well and it seemed that something drastic is about to happen to us? King Hezekiah was visited by the prophet Isaiah and just so happened Hezekiah had invested well. King, uh, uh, pro the prophet Isaiah showed up at, at King Hezekiah's palace and said, get your house in order or you shall surely die. And this is what King Hezekiah did in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 3. He says, now, O Lord, please remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. We ought to want to give God something good to remember us by, something that we've done, some, the, the way we have invested wisely. We ought to want God to, to remember us. And, and, and along with praying, turning his face to the wall and praying to God, Hezekiah, once he was finished, he wept bitterly. And, and I don't know for sure why he cried, but looking at me, if I was in Hezekiah's place, I would cry because I felt that no matter what I had done, it would not be enough to earn God's favor and grace and mercy. At that point, God spoke to the prophet Isaiah that delivered the first message for King Hezekiah to get things in order because he was going to surely die. God instructed Isaiah to go back and tell Hezekiah that he had heard his prayer. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 6 says, I will add 15 years to your life. And I will deliver you and this city out of the hands of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. God extended Hezekiah's life by adding 15 more years and delivering him and the city from the hands of the Assyrians. Make a good investment by investing in eternity. Be uh, co-heirs with Jesus Christ and invest what God has given us in eternity. The main thought at this point in Hezekiah's life is to decide along with Hezekiah, what will we do? What will you do? What will I do when the master returns? What have we done up to this point with what we have been given? Will we spend our time being envious of someone else? In the book of Daniel, 
there was another king, Belshazzar, who lost sight of the fact that God is the owner of everything and everybody, even though he allows us to exercise stewardship over what is his. And yet, remember this, he never relinquishes ownership to anyone until we become joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Daniel chapter 4 verse 25 says that you will be driven. This is what God is, is, is saying to Belshazzar. You will be driven from among men and you shall dwell uh, with the beast of the field and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven and, and seven periods of time will pass over you till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Be careful how you take credit, credit for what God has blessed you with. We should never forget that God gives us as much as we can handle. If we manage what he puts into our hands to invest, we do well. He will increase that. And if we don't invest well, he will take what he has put into our hands and give, gives it to someone who does. And he only gives us according to our ability. Jesus gave his life for us to live an abundant life. And what will we do to increase what he has invested into us? Will we increase it? Will we invest it wisely? Will we invest what Jesus has given to us into others? Will you do something with what you have? Jesus laid down his life one Friday, but early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And his investment into us is an investment into our eternity. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. One day, I want to hear God say to me, Henry, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. I wish I could share with you what God was speaking to me as I was saying those words to you. If we would invest our time wisely into the life to make other folks' lives better, one day God will say, well done, a good and faithful servant. That's all I've got for today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, your word for us today, uh, we thank you for it and we pray that you will use it to help us learn how to return to you a good investment upon that which you have poured into us. Help us to give as you have given to us cheerfully and guide us into pouring into the lives of others what you have put at our disposal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Invest in someone else in this pandemic season by wearing a mask. That's saying, I care about you. And I care about me. And Practice social distancing. They got the markers in stores, but few people are using it. Practice social distancing. 
there are many ways. There are more ways that we can practice social distancing than not practice it. And then wash your hands often. And then be patient and watch. God will keep his promise. This too shall pass. Take care. We'll see you farther on up the road. Bye-bye.